Paint strokes in Corel Photo Paint can be used to apply hand-drawn objects or effects to an image. In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the many features of the Paint tool. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. In my first example, I want to do some painting on this blackboard. I'll use Object, Create, New Object, so that the paint will be its own object and not part of the background. I first want to wash the center of the blackboard. I'll activate the Paint tool, or press the P shortcut. In the Interactive Property bar, I'll click the Brush drop-down for a list of brush categories and the brushes they contain. I'll open the Watercolor category, and I can highlight each brush for a preview of the default nib shape. I'll try Wispy Light Wash, and I can change the nib size by holding the Shift key and dragging the mouse. Note that when any brush property is changed from the default, the brush becomes a custom brush. Now I'll choose a color, and drag the mouse to create the paint strokes. Just like with a real brush, applying repeatedly adds more paint. Next, I'll switch to the Chalk category and choose Square Chalk. I'll set the nib size, and I can hold the Alt key while dragging to add transparency. I'll also switch to a round shape instead of square. With a new color, I'll add some new paint. This would be an ideal use of a tablet and pen, though I'm using a mouse. For stylus users, enabling these icons in the property bar means that pressure, tilt, bearing, and rotation of the pen will affect paint strokes. You can use the Pen Settings tab of the Preferences to establish your default pen pressure. To soften the chalk a bit, I'll go back to Watercolor and use Medium Soft Bleed to smear some of the edges. In this example, I want to add a foggy effect to this night scene. First, I'll click the New Object icon in the Objects Inspector. For the paint, I'll try Airbrush, Soft Wide Cover, Set a large nib size, medium transparency, and a gray color. I'll drag in spots and click in spots to add some random looking fog. Just like with an actual brush, I can click and hold to apply more paint in one spot. For a halo around the lights, I'll add a new object, and I'll use the eyedropper to match the orange of the lights. I'll press P to go back to the paint tool with the same brush as before, and paint around the lights. The Paint tools pair well with the Effects tools. Going back to the Fog object, I can use the Smear tool to add some motion to the fog, and in the Halo object I can use Twirl for some spooky light effects. In this example, I want to transform this cheery daytime scene into a rainy evening scene. To darken the whole image, I'll use a lens. I'll choose Object, Create, New Lens, choose Adjust, Brightness Contrast Intensity, and reduce the brightness. Then I'll add a new object and activate Paint, and for more brush options, I'll open the Brush Settings Inspector. Here are all of the nibs, and the numbers listed with each brush indicate the default nib size. I'll choose a dotted brush and use the nodes on the preview to the left to both rotate and elongate the nib. Under Dab Attributes, I'll increase the number of dabs per click, as well as the spread between dabs. Now with a large nib size and low transparency, I can paint in a storm. The Paint tool is great for adding accents to an image, such as these shiny brush marks placed in this holiday scene. Or I can add some music note brush marks to this photo. Under Dab Attributes, I'll increase the spacing between dabs, and under Stroke Attributes, I'll set a fade-out value. Then I'll drag out a line of notes. Or I can undo and try different blend modes, such as Difference, or Divide, or Texturize, which looks perfect against the wood background. I can also create my own brush nib. In a new document with a new object, I'll activate paint with a round opaque nib and a bit of feathering around the edges, 
and dab some circles to create this flower pattern. Then I'll use the eraser, which has its own brush settings, to remove some of the paint. I need to mask this pattern, so I'll first use the pick tool to select the entire object, then choose Mask, Create, Mask from Object. Next, I'll go back to the paint tool, and in the brush settings inspector, I'll open Nib Options and choose Create from Contents of Mask. I'll reduce the nib size and click OK, and now I can find this nib in the drop down list. Now in a new document, I have a text object above an empty object, which is active. I'll activate paint and choose the nib that I saved. To modify this brush before I use it, I'll open Brush Settings. In Nib Properties, I'll add some transparency and enable Nib Rotation. Under Dab Attributes, I'll increase the spacing between dabs. Next, I'll open the list of brush textures and choose this one. I'll need to assign the texture a value for it to appear. Finally, under Color Variation, I'll increase the hue range so that the color will deviate from the color I start with, and I'll also increase the speed at which the hue changes. I'll start with a large brush size starting from red hues, then add some smaller dabs starting from green, And finally, some small flowers in white and grays, adding a bit of spread so that flowers will scatter from the paint path. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the paint tool in PhotoPaint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.